It's Stormgate. Oh and today, we don't just get the chance to get you some go, exclusive boys. first look at some Stormgate gameplay, but we're also joined by Frost Giants president and game All right, director, lovely, Tim lovely, Campbell lovely. Tell us exactly how Storm so I suppose you should just kind of preface this, man, before we, uh, before we roll out the stream here and actually catch up on what was revealed about Stormgate, the gameplay reveal and all that kind of stuff. There were some, like, unit reveals that went on a little bit, uh, like, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I think. Um, I watched Zombie Grub's video. She was talking about that. Some of the early reveal stuff. So we've seen some images of some units. We've seen some of the, uh, the kind of color palette and what the world and the map is going to look like in Stormgate already. So I'm going into this with some preconceived notions, man. It kind of just looks a little bit like Warcraft with, like, StarCraft units, but, like, much more colorful and uh, cartoony kind of style StarCraft units, you know? Will delight all and, 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 by the way, that's, like, this might, might be neither here or there for some people. Uh, some people really don't like that. Some people are hoping for something a bit more StarCraft. Uh... StarCraft-ish related, you know, kind of dark, grim, uh, gory, all of that crap, you know. Um, purely because the devs behind Stormgate are obviously ex-Blizzard developers. These are guys who worked on StarCraft in the past. Um, and yeah, as soon as though Blizzard stopped development on StarCraft, they went to go do their own thing with Stormgate, right? So people were expecting things a little bit more gritty, uh, I think, with, with Stormgate, you know, myself included. Has that colored my interpretations of the game a little bit, my impressions of the game a little bit? Yeah, it has been. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Something to be aware of. You're not aware of that context going into this. All mines, artificial or otherwise. Thanks okay. so much for joining us, Tim. Thanks. It's great to be here. Now, I've been following Stormgate Good. for years, but for those of us who haven't, what is Stormgate? What is Stormgate it, man? Stormgate is our modern take on the classic real time strategy game formula. It's what we think oh my of as God. a spiritual successor to franchises like Warcraft, Starcraft, Command and & Conquer. And real time strategy okay. games are, are the type of game where you Red can control blue? the entire battlefield. So. This classic RTS formula includes harvesting. I actually just want to dial back again and actually see that combat again. Classic real-time strategy. Because one of my big uh, worries with RTS games is how readable they are, how easy they are to watch. You know, I think that StarCraft nearly uh, really, really nails that. You can have kind of no idea what's going on in uh, in StarCraft to an extent, but you can still appreciate a big army crashing into another big army, and it's still like a cool spectacle to watch. You know, and I think that that is important for games these days. You know, with the streaming culture that we live in and all of that, um, and the content culture that we live in, a game has to be watchable as well as cool to play for it to really kind of pop off, you know. Um, I've also heard people talking about um, how units pop in RTS games, and by that, by pop, we mean how easy is it to tell the difference between which unit is which at a very, very quick glance, you know, because when you're playing these games, you have to make very, very uh, practically instantaneous decisions, you know as to how to count what your opponent's doing, how to micro it in the middle of a chaotic battle like this, right? So, how readable are they, man? I'd say pretty readable. I think it looks okay. For the most part. I think that some of my concern is, is that the background and, like, the map art and, like, the texture, like, look at all these, like, foliage here and stuff. All of this stuff is, like, so saturated and so high contrast, very, very, like, Warcraft style that it does make the units stand out a little bit less. I don't know what y'all think of that, but that's what I'm getting meant from this. Looks cool, though. The spiritual successor to franchises like Warcraft, Starcraft, Command & Conquer. And real-time strategy games are, are the type of game where you can control an entire battlefield. So this classic RTS formula includes harvest okay, okay. It's new. We believe that the RTS Skip a little bit. is something that should be enjoyed by players of all skill levels. And so... We put sure. a lot of effort into making sure that Stormgate feels good, whether you're a pro with high technical skill and you love competitive play. Certainly not me. Or whether it's something that you just want to be able to relax with and experience a story. Now, Tim, I understand... Experience the story, so we're looking at a campaign mode, which is cool. But in particular for me, That's a for present me. to mm -hmm. show today. What are you going to show, Tim? We are going to show gameplay from the pre-alpha okay, of Stormgate. Yeah. Oh, now, this is something that we are big believers in at Frost Giant. We want to share this current state of the game today. Let's take a look. Oh, God, here we oh, go, here we go. I'm so excited. And okay, Jesus, straight into it. All right, man, pre-alpha, I gotta say, I love the look of the buildings. Oh, my God, man, do they look so good. So we've got, like, worker units here, mining a resource. This is very, very StarCraft-ish. Do we even have, like, basically gas over there as well? <laughs> it kind of looks like we have gas over there, too, you know? Now, I'm not a very experienced StarCraft player, you know, but... And right away... 
this looks like an RTS. Tell All me right. what we're seeing. This is the classic start to a 1v1 match. What you're seeing here is the human faction oh my as God. they're sending workers out to harvest. Oh my God, I love the build animations. Building. They actually build them by 3D printing them from the ground up. <laughs> and awesome. you can see them now starting to train troops so they can have an army it's that cool. goes out in the field to fight. Yeah, and I mean, right here, we see in the corner coming up, this is this looks like a scout unit. Yeah, that is literally oh a my cybernetic God. dog with laser eyes. It is called the scout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, dude, so the scout unit is a cybernetic dog. See, this is what I'm talking about, okay? I know that this isn't going to bother some people. Some people are going to be like, oh, it's cute. Oh, it's, it, it's cool, whatever, you know? Oh, some people are just not going to care about, like, the artistic style of the game. But I can't help but feel like a lot of, I can't help but feel like a lot of people who um, really enjoy StarCraft, really enjoy that kind of like grim dark aesthetic and stuff like that, might be put off by this. I mean, they'll play it anyway, because it's going to be the new big RTS, you know, for at least a little while. Let's see how well it does at launch, right? Or like after launch. But everyone's going to play the game. But at the same time, man, a doggo is your scout unit, dude. I don't know, man. That feels just a little bit. It just feels a little bit too whimsical for me personally. As for my taste, you know, is it the kind of thing that's going to put me off and make me just not want to play the game? Obviously not, man. But still, okay. It's designed for early game. It's a unique unit to the human faction, right? And you can see him now running through the base, trying to see look what at him go, man. Can find out about his enemy. Yeah, I mean, scouting and information is such an important part of RTS games. It really okay, is, dude. and this is something that we've embraced early game. The Don't go going to die, man. Designed so it can actually sense units beyond its sight radius. So oh, it's a, it's awesome. a, especially useful early on. Oy, so oy. we're heading into what looks like the first engagement of this game. What are we seeing? Well, what we're seeing right here Shit. is the Red Scout getting surprised by a group of blue troops coming through the Light Force, which is a new train type. Okay. Twist on on the tactic. Builders binking. Uh, builders binking. <laughs> builders building. Uh, bunkers, just to kind of parry an attack. Okay, cool, cool. Battlefield here. And how do these light forests work? The light forests let smaller units move through them. They're I'm a stone. little bit concerned about the um, lack of attack animation on these blue guys. Look at that, man. Like, look at the blue dudes and how they shoot. And tell me if you can tell what target and what specific worker they are aiming at. Or if they're shooting the building. The blue troops coming through the light forest. Because me, personally? Twist on, on the tactical battlefield here. And how do these light forests work? Light force, let's I don't know, bro. It's just like a pew, like a little explosion at the end of the gun. Obviously, you can tell which worker they're shooting because the workers were dying. So, yeah, stupid thought experiment. But at the same time, if you're managing an army of like a billion guys, I wouldn't have a fucking clue who the hell these guys are shooting at, man. I wouldn't have a clue. And I think that that's a readability issue that they can quite easily address. They can just kind of tweak up the animation, either make it a physical uh, projectile that kind of pews across the screen and hits the target that they're shooting at, um, because it looks like these guys are shooting like rifles. Or what they can do is, and this would be my preferred option, when a guy is about to shoot at somebody, he should get a little very thin laser that comes out of his gun, just a red laser, like laser sights or whatever. Um, it only has to be very, very dim, but it should be kind of clear what your ranged units are shooting at, in my opinion, right? And more importantly, what your opponent is aiming at as well. Maybe your guys could have like green lasers and your enemies always has whatever you know yellow orange something like that even that would be interesting too man but yeah i think the readability could be improved on these guys quite a bit force work the light force lets smaller units move through them they have concealment ah. it's allowed blue to raid red space in which case red is barely getting uh, a turret built with their speed building from their workers which okay is another, a huge turrets up he's got to run for his life and oh my they're God. about to pop out a couple extra defenders here from their mech base so we got these huge. huge mechs and i mean just visually it looks like they are huge. countering the heck out of these blue infantry but can these red mechs fit through the forest? No, they're too big to oh go through. They're heavy units. They're designed to use their chain guns ah. to go through groups of enemies, but they can't fit through the light forest, which blue knew That's cool. to his advantage. I like that, man. Okay, so we're... I like that a lot, man. So smaller units can traverse, like, very, very thick and densely wooded terrain. Like, those, uh, those blue guys went straight through. Yeah, the little they're blue units could go straight through the woods, but the big guys can't. I like so that. I think that that's cool. Max, and I mean, just visually, it looks like they are countering the heck out of these blue. You also get no vision through the trees at all. The oh. No, they're too oh, very, very little. They're heavy units. They're designed to use their chain guns ah. to go through groups of enemies. But cool, cool, cool. All right, man. I like that. Using the map, using the terrain and stuff.
Very nice. Okay, so we're in mid game. It feels like most ATS games, they either just say, okay, well, one unit's on high ground, so it gets an advantage. Boom, done. And that's like all it really comes down. Oh, like one unit's on high ground, so it gets more vision or more range or something, you know? Um, but I like them in the play with Terrain a little bit. Normally, where you make some big tech decisions, what's Red up to? You're seeing Red commit to a tech path that gives them big battlefield mechs and air units like this event. Oh. And it looks like they're Bit of a janky animation. Right on top of Blue, who oh. is killing a, a chicken? What's the chicken there, Tim? <laughs> Yeah, that's a giant chicken with a Viking helmet on it. Uh, use fuck? your imagination. Stormgate's in pre-alpha, and that's art that we haven't gotten to yet. But imagine <laughs> it as a big cool, Mad cool. Max Raider. Okay, man, pickups, drops. Like this is very, very StarCraft-esque. Oh, I see red diving onto blue, and hey, picking back up into the air transport. That's some classic high-level micro. It is, and it's really important for Stormgate oy, that oy, we oy. maintain a high skill ceiling so that players can express themselves on the battlefield by maneuvering and how they interact with the battlefield. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Um... Again, extremely just like kind of like StarCraft in a, in, a, in, a, in a fantasy setting. So this is something that I've um, been thinking about quite a bit. Like how are they, how, how do they plan? Because uh, the guys at Stormgate, they keep on talking about bringing um, the RTS genre into like the modern age. You know, this is like a modern RTS for modern gamers. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be like the quintessential RTS, you know. Um, I'm yet to see too much that it's doing that's like super unique. You know, I kind of want there to be a thing uh, or, or, or a feature or even just a collection of smaller features that really set it, up, uh, set it apart and kind of innovate a little bit on the genre as well. Um, and here we have the... F I don't know what you guys think about that, man, but it sort of feels like Warcraft and StarCraft had a baby, which is really good, by the way. It's really cool. Did I expect a little bit more? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm expecting a little bit too much, man. Maybe it's a me problem. Final you know? fight of the game, and it looks like blue is coming up against those mechs. Red is trapped on the other side of the trees. Oh wait, they can blast through oh them my now. God. And blue's dodging these enormous shots, and we can also see blue swarming in from oh. both sides. This is not looking good for red. Red is no, screwed, man. Grim. Red, red is on the ropes right here, and they've been outmaneuvered. They're caught in the corner here between two different forces coming in with a yeah. mobile pincer. Man, and a mobile course, pincer. There's the GGs. The most classic ending to an RTS. Oh man, GG. Get Tastosis on that stat. Outside of 1v1, what's coming up for Stormgate? What you've seen today is just the tip of the iceberg. We have so much more in store. We're going to be revealing a bunch of stuff about Stormgate the rest of this year. We're introducing new modes. We have a three-player versus AI cooperative mode. We have team-based competitive modes. We're going to be sharing information Ooh, about team team-based story competitive mode campaign. Uh, we have more story, more campaign that you just saw today. But Tim, what if I want to play the game right now? And so the additional factions, I believe it's like, he said factions, more, by the way. He said more factions are on the way, plural, uh, beyond humans. As far as I understand, I think that there was uh, just humans and um, almost like demonic entities, uh, demonic units. Or some kind of like demon-ish uh, faction going on. Is there more than that? I haven't been very up to date with this game. Maybe that's already kind of common knowledge, but if you want to, it'd be really, really cool, man, to see like a like a a four or five faction RTS game. I think that would be sweet, man. Huge undertaking, obviously, but play the game as soon as possible. You wish list Stormgate on Steam, and you go to playstormgate.com to sign up for the beta. We're starting closed testing in July. Ooh, all right, man. Sign up for the beta. Closed beta. Uh, rolling out in July, so we're going to see much, much more of that, I guess. Will there be an NDA on the closed beta? I don't know, man. Closed betas can, can go either way, you know? It can be a closed beta where they invite very specific people that they trust to give them good feedback, but there's no NDA sometimes. I don't know, man. We'll see what they plan to do with that, man. Either way, what do you guys think about Stormgate, man? This is one that I've got my eye on. I've had my eye on this game for quite a while, um, but at the same time, I'm really, really bad at keeping up with games. <laughs> So this is the first time I've actually tried to catch up a little bit on how the game's doing um, and how it's coming together, man, and how it's looking in this early footage, man, at this early time, you know. So what do you guys think? Me? You know, I'll obviously be playing it. Am I super blown away right now? Not really. You know, looks good. Looks all right. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. I should catch all of you guys just a tad bit later. Yeah.